When it comes to decisions from the U.S. Supreme Court, Roe v. Wade stands as a landmark for its shameless display of ignorance and its spurious argumentation attempting to justify the rationale of those six out of nine lawyers in black robes. Justice Harry Blackmun, in writing for the majority, said, quote, we need not resolve the difficult question of when life begins, unquote. What difficult question, Harry? There is no uncertainty in science as to when human life begins. Biologists who discovered cell structure in 1838 and genes and chromosomes in the late 1800s, and DNA in 1953, all agree that the beginning of life in all mammal species is a single event when the sperm cell joins the egg cell at the point of conception. Blackman says that we should, quote, note the wide divergence of thinking on this most sensitive and difficult question, unquote. He goes on to cite the Jewish faith, the Protestant religion, the Stoics, and even goes back to the Aristotelian theory of immediate animation as evidence for confusion on the issue. But is it appropriate for Supreme Court justices to dwell on religious beliefs from the intellectual dark ages in coming to a decision in the 20th century? Blackman and his five colleagues cop out completely with the statement, quote, when those trained in the respective disciplines of medicine, philosophy, and theology are unable to arrive at any consensus, the judiciary is not in a position to speculate as to the answer, unquote. I'd have liked to ask Judge Blackman, since when do medicine, philosophy, and theology have to agree on anything? Medicine is based on science. The others are not. Only an ignoramus will weigh theology and philosophy equally with science and medicine. Do you weigh creationism equally with evolution, Harry? There is no disagreement in science as to the beginning of human life. It is settled fact as much as that the planet Earth is round. If you refuse to accept it, you are indulging in a faith-based belief, which has no place in a Supreme Court decision. I'd have liked to ask Judge Blackman, if your granddaughter were ill, where would you take her? To a priest for an exorcism? Or to your local college professor of Eastern philosophy who'd comfort you with the words, oh well, if she dies, she dies. She'll reincarnate in a better form. Or would you take her to a doctor? So suppose that, for the words philosophy and theology in Blackman's statement, we substitute the words biology and physiology. Then the sentence must go like this. When those trained in the respective disciplines of medicine, biology, and physiology are in complete agreement that life begins at conception, then the judiciary is in no position to overrule the unambiguous consensus of science. The sentence must end exactly the opposite and the entire Roe versus Wade case must end in the opposite decision. How can a professional attorney who has attained the position of Supreme Court justice, one might ask, display such abysmal scientific ignorance? Aren't these men and women the pinnacle of intellectual elite in our land? The oracles of knowledge and wisdom? Isn't it the height of hubris to criticize them and to suggest that our leading judges might need additional education. But keep in mind that a judge is just a lawyer who puts on a black robe to administer our judicial system. And not one law school in the United States requires as a prerequisite for entrance or for graduation that a student has completed just one, only one, science course of any kind. Not Harvard, not Yale, not Stanford, no law school requires any inkling of science whatsoever in its graduates. Without black robes, people have a lot of mixed feelings about lawyers, which sometimes include suspicion, mistrust, and outright contempt. But somehow, all of these feelings evaporate when the lawyer puts on a black robe. Attorneys who become judges 
are only entering an avenue of politics different from legislators. And we all know that judges are lawmakers in their own right. And Supreme Court justices are just the most successful lawyers turned judges in parlaying their political fortunes up the ladder to the highest level. Yes, we owe the judges respect, just as we do police officers. Both are in positions of law enforcement that we want and need to administer social order. But to suppose that the black robe imbues judges with powers of judgment just because it's in their job title is ludicrous. In the Dred Scott decision, seven out of nine Supreme Court justices agreed that slaves were property and could be taken into free states without compromising the slave owner's rights of ownership, just as if they were horses or cattle. Another provision that doesn't often get quoted is that a Negro who is descended from slaves, even if he became free, could never become an American citizen. Were those judges great thinkers? The decision in Roe versus Wade made law that has caused the deaths of more human beings than any other in history. That's not a matter of opinion. That's a matter of fact. More than 60 million prenatal boys and girls have died from abortions since January of 1973. It stands without question as the worst stain on the Supreme Court in its history.